there is a genocide, another genocide going on in Congo because we had it first one during King Leopold II. So now we have another genocide going on in Congo. The situation is really uncertain for a lot of Congolese. Remember, uh, we, we've been in this war for about 20 years now. So a lot of us, a lot of uh, Congolese grow up, you no, know, you grow up, you were born, some of them were born in this war, some of them grow up in this war. It's uh, difficult because we, we Congolese uh, are really going through a lot. A lot of people are taking advantage of what we've got, which is minerals. And uh, the situation actually now we have someone that is there not to because we ch we choose him or we voted him he was imposed to us joseph kabila in uh, 2001 and he was only 29 and then uh, no experience someone he grew up outside the congo but because his father was assassinated he was president and he was assassinated so the international community decided to impose him on us because he was so young, it was easy, it was easy for them to manipulate him. So he was there and then became president, they made him. And uh, he, in our constitution, if I can say this, the, the, in terms of democracy, our constitution is giving uh, uh, anybody who's president only to stay, you have one, a uh, two years term, basically, two terms. I'll say not two years, pardon me, two terms. And then he did it. He, the first one was in 2006, we had the election, and in 2011. But his term ended in 2016, in December 2016. Now he doesn't want to step down. He doesn't want to organize election because he, he is now is 45. So basically, if I look, he's still young, but basically he has to respect the constitution. But he doesn't want to leave. He just want to stay longer as a typical uh, African dictator we know. But it's difficult now because a lot of Congolese are taking, especially youth, are taking on the street. And in 2016, uh, December 2016, because he didn't uh, organize election, and the international community asked opposition to sit down with him and then to have a dialogue with, him, with, with the president, with Joseph Kabila. Imagine someone who didn't respect the constitution and then instead of you being on side of the Congolese, no, you're asking Congolese to sit down and have a dialogue with illegitimate president. So what happened? They had dialogue. A lot of Congolese, I would say majority were not happy about it, but they end up they had come. I'm one of those people who are really mad actually. And uh, and what happened? They, the president, the, the Joseph Kabila, had a dialogue with the opposition. They, they signed a kind of accord, something like that. And uh, he supposed this, uh, they gave him another one year. So he's supposed to organize the election December, this December coming. Next, I mean, this December 2017. And guess what? He said he's, he won't be able to organize the election. So that's, that's how I, not just me, a lot of Congolese, we feel like an international community they pretend like they like congolese they don't they they like congo because of mineral but they don't like congolese because they believe in someone we knew is not gonna respect the constitution in fact they are the one who imposed him there so he's doing a very good job for them because he's giving them access to mineral that's why they pretend to be on side of congolese but they are not they never been and then I don't think they will. What are the main countries and the main brands, corporations that benefit from this war? What do you think? All these companies uh, uh, who say UK government, or a uh, Belgian government, all the USA play massive role in Congo and uh, France, all these uh, Western gov uh, government, they play massive role in Congo. They've been doing that for years. If I can look back, we had independence in 2000, oh no, no, sorry, in 19, uh, 1960, right? And then we elected Patrice Lumumba as our prime minister. And he said, we, he said after colonization, he said, now we're free, we want to pull, we want to work for our people. We suffered enough. 
and then we want our mineral to Congolese mineral to benefit Congolese first. And what happened after that speech? They killed him. They, he was assassinated. Yeah, in 1961, they killed him. And then what? U.S. government. They know there's so many reports about it. In fact, this death was the most important assassination of 20th century. U.K., Belgium, U.S.A. They they came together and then they use uh, as obviously use Congolese and then they he was assassinated and then imposed Mobutu and Mobutu reigned for 32 years. He, he was like the darling of the West. 32 years, he was a very strong dictator. Until 1997, then they got tired of him and then they, they, they used Rwanda and Uganda government and they, uh, one Congolese who they, uh, called Rwanda Zé Kabila. And they had a coup. They ran in Uganda, invade Congo 1997. <laughs> Have you it. seen of the documentary Blood in your mobile? Yes. What do you think about it? It is a reality because when you look at uh, we all need Congo to have phone. We all need Congo to have laptop, video game. But how do we get it? We have to Congolese, 48 Congolese women has to be raped per hour for us to get older. Is it, that's how it is. And a lot of young Congolese, seven years old, or six years old, are working in a mine for all of us to get, include me basically, for all of us to get iPhone 2, 5, 6, we see here. All this Samsung, all this company they're using because you need cotton. And that's how, and there are many Congolese, imagine a seven years old supposed to be in school, but he's working in a mine company for the world to get the technology we all, more than to call technology we all are using. And not just cotton, we have cobalt, we have uh, copper, we have a lot of diamond, gold, but Congo, we no, we don't benefit on it. We actually victim because we were born in the Congo. Uh, what do you think about the efforts that corporations like Nike and others uh, trying, trying to do, trying to undertake to trace these minerals? These are conflict-free minerals, these are not conflict-free. Uh, why do you think it's not done enough, if it is so? To be honest, my opinion, that's just my opinion. I don't believe in conflict mineral-free. I don't believe it. Because when you look... There is so much going on. There's mafia going on there. How do you trace it? Even, okay, for instance, if we have to, knowing how it works in that, in that part of the Congo, they will cover it up like it's not a blood mineral. The problem I've been telling people, I've been uh, uh, raising awareness about this. I know at the beginning it was a good idea, but knowing the government we have, it's a corrupt government. They will cover it up. They will try to copy it. It's difficult to trace it. It's difficult to know this one is blood mineral. This one is not. It's difficult. And uh, I think, from I believe my opinion, the, my opinion, the most important thing is now is to have a very strong institution, you know, legitimate institution, great leader. That's what we need. We need elected by Congolese people. I mean, I'm working with a lot of refugees, a lot of no refugees, a lot of Congolese who left the central part of Congo. They live in the city I was born, Kikwit. I'm working with them. And then when you talk with them, you see some women, pregnant women, they, 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 they're telling you like my, my husband was killed by machet and things like that and then when you see picture when you see a three years old boy say i left my family i don't know where they are and then she was running with the neighbors so you it's 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 really really very very traumatized moment congolese people are going through but still we are strong because we know we're gonna rise we will uh do you think it reminds rwandan's genocide and in what way if it is so what, the situation what in Rwanda. I mean, I what happened in Rwanda in 1994 was a really bad thing. But when I look, the number of people die in Congo right now is is a UN report say is a the deadly uh, 
uh, war since two thousand since uh, um, World War Two. So this war in Congo, people have died more. I mean, since World War Two, there is no country people lost a lot of people since World War Two. Imagine the report. I mean, imagine over six million people lost their life in Congo, and they still dying. It's really the deadly war. It's really the deadly one. I mean, what happened in Rwanda was really bad. But the person who is the president in Rwanda, Kagame, is playing a massive role in this. Is has been playing a massive role in this situation going in Congo. In 2000, for instance, in 2012, he was supporting the militias called M23 that the UN report put it out there. And that war that they took a no a northern part of I mean not, uh, North Kivu in the eastern part of Congo, he was supporting the militias to a president to another from another country, and this is not the first time he is has been doing that for many years now. So Kagame is not uh, someone as a Congolese person is not someone I can look up to. I don't even like to talk about him because if we are in this situation, he's one of the key player. He's really, really a very deadly person. I'm talking to me as Congolese, and there's plenty of report. Even UN Mapping in 2010 put it Kagame is very, he might be doing some stuff in his country through Congolese mineral anyway. But for us, he's a, he's a, he's a very evil man. What do you think the government, why do you think the government hasn't succeeded in bringing peace to the eastern part of the Democratic Republic of Congo? Because uh, the Kabila is there, like I said before, Kabila was imposed on us and he, he has no interest in changing anything. In fact, he, he actually likes this situation because this situation gives him opportunity to stay longer in power. Because soon as there is trouble everywhere, he actually played a part. He's a part of the trouble in Congo, so he likes it. Because if this we have trouble all over the Congo for him, is a good excuse to tell the world, no, look, I can't organize the election because uh, we are, and then you call a state of emergency. We are in trouble. We need to fix the uh, eastern part of Congo. We need to stop the war in the Kasai first before we can organize the election. So this, and apart from that, he also a key player because he he, he works with a lot of uh, uh, multinational. Suppose, for instance, someone like if you look at Par Paradise Paper, you see Glencore. Glencore is uh, the owner of the Glencore is his best friend. So they kind of he works with people. Uh, uh, Dan Gertler to get access to the mineral that Dan Gertler is one of the m billionaire now and so all the money he made from Congo mineral so he for Kabila government they first of all they illegitimate people don't like them and they are he is not there for the interest of the Congolese people is there for his own interest and the people impose him which is a lot of international community government they impose him there Belgium played big part for him to be president. 29 years old, never grew up in Congo, no experience, nothing, and then they just came imposing because his father was assassinated by the people who imposed the son. You, you know, that's, that is a big mafia going on in there. That's why you see people are dying in Congo, but international community is saying the problem in Congo is conflict. Is, uh, the problem in Congo is a, is a complex. It's not complex because they know what's going on in Congo. They are the ones who create this issue to get access to the mineral for free. What is the role of Western society and corporations and who are the main players in the market? I mean, the main player in the market is a lot of, it's like uh, I said, a lot of multinational playing. They support militias. They do support militias, a lot of them, because as soon as they come to your village, they rape women, those militias, and then they kill a lot of people, and people run away. You left the village empty. And then when they left the village empty, those multinationals are allowed to get access from you know, Obviously, they deal with the, the regime. So, and the people, Congolese people don't benefit anything. So they do that. Oh, now they're also doing land grabbing. They are trying to replace foreign 
the land the people were living now is a mine the companies or some new people who are not Congolese occupy the land so they play important role on the destabilization of Congo because the plan is to split Congo we've been fighting for it for years so the plan is to split our country into I don't know how many countries they want but it's not working because Congolese people I, we are we are one. We may have our own weakness, but when it comes to a foreign integrity and for uh, and uh, our authority, uh, our land and the integrity, we won't. We don't like it. We just want to be Congolese. We don't want people to split our country. They split Sudan. We know the result of South Sudan. So we don't want people to divide our country. It doesn't make sense when you divide the country after that. What's happened? They 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 just they. The problem is to just get the land or split uh, our country into I don't know how many countries, but it won't work because that one is is not going to work. It's not going to work, and we believe Congo will rise. We know we will overcome it. We always did. With King Leopold II, he killed, he killed about ten million people, but we overcome it. We will rise. We definitely believe it. Uh, do you think uh, the UN presence in Congo and other NGO play any role? UN, I don't. I'll say 50-50, Not really that much because they they don't really do that much. We have a, one of the biggest UN uh, uh, thingy in Congo, but they don't do that much. We still have war in Congo. We just had we just another war just started in Kasai and ten. Uh, Thousand in Kasai, they found how many mass graves? 84 mass graves. Where is UN? They are there, just uh, obviously walking around with a machine and, and a gun. They don't do anything. We, if we get our country back, they have to leave. Uh, what measures can be done globally to help? the situation in Congo to stop this war? What can be done in general? We want really people who people to be on the side of the Congolese. If you really, really, if you have a mother, you have a sister, you have niece, you have grandma, you have daughter, you have to say something about what's going on in Congo. Because many are dying in Congo. I mean, 48 Congolese women has to be raped. Six months baby has to be raped for all of us to get this phone all this technology we're using we can see getting it but we can get it in a good way not by raping a six month baby what would the the rape in congo is a is a is a they use it as a weapon of war so it's a, if you we care about that we need to say something about the congo we need to be moved and if you we care about children, we have to say something about Congo as well. Because the many who are dying in Congo are under the age of five. There is malnutrition is going to broke up no long ago. The UN report said it, I think it was in definitely in October this year. There will be malnutrition in Kasai region. So many I'm doing my research on that. Many who are dying in Congo are under the age of five. Some of them are working in the mine, seven years old, are working working in the mine for all of us together. So if you care about children, you have to break the silence. You have to say something about what's going on in Congo. Even if you care about environment, you have to say something about what's going on in Congo. Because Congo has the second rainforest after the Amazon. And then they are cutting this, the, the forest because we have a, this regime all he wants is just to get money. Whether you have to cut the tree in the, without control, he doesn't really care that much. So if you care about environment, you have to say something about the Congo because the health impact will be very, very tremendous. It's going to be very bad. And uh, we will have a... a if this situation still continue with unstable government, unstable regime, then I can see the, the health impact of climate change in Congo is going to be, and it's not just in Congo, even people who live around Congo basin will suffer. Because a lot of people depend on that forest, and now they're cutting the tree and the animals. What's going to happen to them? That's another thing. 
So it's really, really important. We need to be on the side of the Congolese. They really need a good ally. People will be on their side. We've done that before. I really, I believe we can do that again. Uh, they all stood on the side of South African Jewel apartheid. They won't get, they all can do that again. I really address on the, the audience, your, the audience I, I know is going to be more Russian thing to come on the side of Congolese be on the side of Congolese. We we wanna have uh, people who that that can be you be the voice of the voiceless. Congolese people are really really need there's a genocide going on in Congo. Just one province they found what eighty four mass grave. And imagine one grave uh, they kill they put about seven hundred people just in one grave. So it's a uh, it's really very uh, humanitarian issue that are going on. If there anything you can do, whether you're a singer, sing for Congo, whether you are a poor, a, mis a, a spoken word person, do it for Congo.